What's going on YouTube? This is JabberTech and this beautiful phone in my hand is the OnePlus 8 Pro. I've been using this for a little over a week now and I just want to give you my thoughts. I want to let you know what I think about this phone, especially since I'm a Pixel 4 user. I've been using Pixel phones for quite some time, but I have to tell you the OnePlus might just make me ditch my Pixel 4 this time. Now by no means is this my full review, so make sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below letting me know what exactly you want to know about this phone. This is more of a recap, more of a general how do I feel about this phone so let's get into this how are my thoughts and feelings of the OnePlus 8 Pro so the design of the OnePlus 8 Pro is very modern it's very sleek it's very appealing to a lot of people although I wish they just would have beefed up the phone a little bit because I'm not a fan of this camera bump but a case will fix that with no problem and I'm going to put a case on in a second because this black one, this glossy black edition that I have, is a fingerprint magnet for sure. If you don't like fingerprints, get a case or get the blue one because that has a really nice matte finish. I was hoping the black would have a matte finish as well, but maybe next year. At $999 for this 12 gigabyte of RAM, 256 gigabyte option. I think it's a little bit expensive, not for what it is, just for what OnePlus is, but I'm not gonna harp on that. They're giving us everything that we all complained about, everything that we've wanted in a flagship device. So we get the IP resistance, we also get wireless charging, and, and the Warp 30 wireless charging is just as fast as the cable. So it was definitely worth the wait, and it's worth it to me to wait a little bit and spend a little bit more money. But the specs in here are really impressive, and the camera, you get four cameras, you get a dedicated color lens, you also get a wide a standard and a telephoto, so if you like taking macros, you're going to be really happy with this OnePlus, equally as happy if you like taking those landscapes and if you just like having fun with a camera, I think the OnePlus 8 Pro allows you to have a lot of fun, especially with those color filters. You can get some nice creative shots here. The panel itself is a beautiful panel here at 6, 7, 8 inches. And to answer your questions, I know you're about to type, what about the green tint? Well, honestly, guys, I didn't even notice it. I did not notice it at all in everyday use. The only time I noticed it is when I was looking for it. And when I was in a super dark room, I decided to go test it out. I turned off all the lights. There was no ambient light, no light from outside. Turned the brightness all the way down. And sure enough, I did see a green tint. But are you going to notice that on a daily basis? Only if you live in a cave. Only if you look at your phone in complete darkness all the time. And OnePlus has addressed it. They will be issuing a software update that's going to fix that. So don't let that little green tint issue kind of ruin your thoughts on this OnePlus 8 phone. Because the panel is beautiful at 120 hertz and QHD. You can't get any better than this right now. It's gorgeous. It's an awesome panel. Anything you watch on it, movies, TV, even just searching the web, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Now my general thoughts about the design of this phone, I think it's a nice looking phone, although I'm not really a huge fan of the curved displays anymore. I think they should all go back to flat, but that's just my opinion. Some people really like the way this curve looks and kind of likes this waterfall design. Again, it all depends on what you guys like, and for me it's really not that much of a big deal. Although the palm rejection software on the OnePlus devices needs a little bit of work. The back of the phone looks nice, although I do not like this bump either. I think they should have just beefed up the overall design and just made that a flat back. If you don't have a case, if you're one of those people that live on the edge and you just use a phone as is, it's going to rock, it's going to go all over the place. And also, I'd just be worried that you'd scratch up the lens. So again, my solution for all of those issues right now is just to put on a case. And now I'm super happy. Now I have no issues with palm rejection. I have no issues with keeping that camera lens scratch free. But a flat screen is definitely easier and definitely more manageable as these devices get larger and larger. But what I like about the OnePlus device, of course it's snappy, of course it's very fluid. But what I like about OnePlus when it comes to an overall phone experience versus the Pixel 4, XL is that OnePlus make it fun again. OnePlus makes it very customizable and I'm really able to do what I want with this phone. That's something that I miss from the Pixel line. The Pixel line really has the best camera and I'm gonna talk about the camera in a second, but the Pixel 4 XL has the best camera, hands down. Take a shot with your phone and you know it's gonna come out good just about every time. Let's talk about the camera since I mentioned the Pixel 4 XL being the goat of mobile photography. OnePlus does a nice job. Now, of course, in all their marketing specs, they kind of want you to believe that it's the best and it's number one and this and that and all this good stuff. But honestly, guys, it is a good shooter, but you might have to take a couple shots in order to get the perfect one. That's one thing that I did notice. It tends to try and over brighten, over sharpen. Sometimes you have to focus on something else to get the lighting just right. If you do take your time with it, you'll get a really nice shot.
And for those of you that enjoy pro mode, something that the Pixel 4 XL does not have, you can go in and you can actually tweak everything that you want and you'll be able to get a great shot. Most of the time I leave it on auto. The only thing I do is change from wide angle to telephoto. I'm sure that's like most of us, but let me tell you, the camera is really nice, definitely improved from last year. And if you do take a couple shots, if you do kind of line it up and make sure in your mind you know what you want to take a photo of, you'll get a nice shot with the OnePlus 8 Pro. What the OnePlus 8 has shown me coming from the Pixel 4 is that while the camera is great, I think a lot of us spend a little too much time talking about the camera. These are thousand dollar devices and I want to have fun with my thousand dollar device. I want to go in and customize the accent colors. I want to just go in and within the stock launcher, I want to just change my icon pack on the fly. And that's something that you can do with the OnePlus launcher. You can just go to the Google Play Store. You can download some of your favorite icon packs and then just change it on the fly really quickly. I also like the fact that anything you think about, you can probably customize it with a OnePlus device. That's not something you can do with Google's launcher, with Google's phone. It is what it is. And that's the same mentality for a lot of these manufacturers, but not with OnePlus. They do a really nice job making us customize our phone and, and really giving us some options when it comes to what we want from a phone. On the OnePlus devices, for example, with the power button, you have multi-function, you have mostly use for that power button. Double clicking on it gives you fast access to the camera. And if you just hold down on it, you'll get access to your Google Assistant. And it's super, super fast as well. Battery life is something that you might be a little concerned about because this is 120 hertz QHD display. And I am happy to tell you guys that I get about a full day of use with this phone using it at its max capacity. That means keeping 120 on and keeping that QHD display on. So I'm getting about 22 hours since my last charge and I still got a couple hours to go. But I'm really happy to tell you that I don't have any issue with this phone. Now, of course, depending on what you do, if you're playing a lot of games, if you're doing a lot of 5G goodness, you will burn through that battery more rapidly. But if you're the average person, I don't think you'll have any problem getting through the entire day. But again, topping up is really quick and really fast. So battery life and the battery itself should really never be a concern when talking about the 8 Pro. Wireless charging on the OnePlus 8 Pro is also super, super fast. This warp charge is something that once you get used to, you're going to throw all of your other chargers away. The only thing I don't like about the warp charger is that the fan gets pretty loud, but that's just because of all the power. And I also don't like that the cable's way too small. They should have given us a longer cable or a detachable cable, but that's a video for another day. I also like the fact that you have reverse charging on this, so if you want to charge up your headphones, all you have to do is place them on the back of your device and it's going to start charging. Now this is slow, this is somewhat of a gimmick right now, but if you are in a pinch and your headphones are dead, it's really the only way that you'll be able to make it through your commute. So I like it, and again, it's just showing you that OnePlus include all of the latest tech. So for $1,000, I think they're doing a great job. They're really giving us a lot of technology for their price. Now, while I'm not going to test my phone, I do not put my phone in water for a water test. I am happy that it has an official IP rating. That just means if I get stuck in the rain or if it does drop in a lake while I'm out doing my thing, I'm not really going to be too concerned. So having an official IP rating is definitely a huge plus. But overall, guys, I want to let you know that the 8 Pro is a great device if you're thinking about picking it up. I really suggest that you pick it up if you're looking for a device that's going to be able to make it through the next three, four, maybe even five years, depending how long you keep your phones. This is really going to be there for you with the 12 gigabyte of RAM, the 256 storage. You're not going to have any issue keeping this for a couple years. And they also give us two years of updates and three years of security patches, even though the security patch is a bi-monthly patch. That's not something you guys should be concerned about. That's basically it. These are just my thoughts on the 8 Pro. To sum it up, the battery is really good. The display is awesome. I like all the features in here. I like all the customizable features. The phone just reminded me again that phones can be fun, customizable, fast, and really a phone can be an extension of yourself. You don't have to let manufacturers dictate what they want to dictate and how their phone should operate. So if you're interested in customizing, if you're interested in a fast phone, if you're interested in really just bucking the trend, the 8 Pro is the way to go. But if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. I will have a full review coming up shortly. So make sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and leave a comment down below if you want to know anything about this phone. Definitely appreciate it, guys. I'll catch you next time.